It's exactly 7 after the hour 6 on the mighty Metro FM. Uh, welcome to it. Thank you so much uh, to Touch uh, and the Touchdown team. I had uh, one of my good friends, TT Mba, on the show with, uh, you know, my little nephews, nieces. Did I say nephew? Nieces, actually, in Dumi and TJ. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed having them there. Thank you so much for bringing the girls through. Now, today's show was uh, a planned and done. Katlako Kilampela, he's in the building. We're going to be talking to the former Bafana Bafana superstar, the former Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, sundowns, Royal Eagles, Super Sport, Reigns out in France as well. He's in the studio. We want to speak about everything Katla Kompela, right? But I was a little bit excited when I got into the studio because Malcolm, uh, and I, I speak to Malcolm quite often. Sometimes I let him switch the mic on. Malcolm is a technical producer here on the show. And I got in today and uh, the game is on. The semi-final, the cricket is on. And remember, every single Tuesday since the Rugby World Cup has ended, we've been speaking about the Proteas and the cricket. When we started, I asked Malcolm how much he knows about cricket. And I think he said, he knows that they hit the ball, and if it goes up, it's four or six. Literally, that's all he knew. Today, after three weeks of listening to the show, I come in and he says, hey, do you see what's going on? Ah, New Zealand are not going to beat those runs. I think India are going to the finals. I was so excited that he's now able to read the score in cricket. I know it sounds like a small thing, but geez, what an achievement that is. Uh, Malcolm is my litmus test for most things. So if he's understanding, then I know you guys are following. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, the suggestion on the Tuesdays there. Today's conversation is going to be with Katla Kompela. Uh, he trained it, uh, I think it was uh, a week ago. But Katla was somebody that we've used on the show uh, more than once to give us his thoughts on matches, on players, etc., etc. So when we heard about his new venture, we said, hey, come on and let's, uh, let's talk. Let's give you the hour and let's have a conversation about all things Kilampela. Some of the questions that most, like myself, are wondering about his life after football. But we were then hit with the sad, sad news. Once again, gone too soon, gone too young. Former Super Sport United goalkeeper, George Chigova has passed. He passed earlier today. Man that was only born in 1991 has lost his life. We're going to be speaking to Stan Matthews as well of Supersport United just for confirmation of those news and of course uh, uh, just to, 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 to take our hats off to George. Let's take a quick break. Welcome to the Sports Not Amplified with Andile on the mighty Metro FM. Really appreciate you joining us. Supersport United CEO you know, Stan Matthews is on the line to talk to us. Stan, thank you so much for talking to us. I'm always looking for opportunities to talk to you. I can't say I was looking forward to this one. It is uh, on a very sad note that we get to have our conversation today. Yeah, evening, Andile, and uh, evening to the listeners. Um, most times I'm more than happy to chat about anything with you, Andile, <laughs> um, and Metro, but obviously today a very sad day um, for everyone connected with our football club, and I think the whole uh, football industry. And it's very heartbreaking and sad for us when we, we see this type of sad news coming out. Uh, last week we were we were grieving with Amazulu, and um, and and you know it's it's not just one club; it's a football fraternity, and you know for us um, it's not only us here in South Africa in terms of George, but you know all his following and 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 fans and 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 you know the people of Zimbabwe. Um, for whom he rep represented Zimbabwe uh, over 30 times and, uh, you know, proudly for his country. And uh, it was, you know, it was actually playing for Zimbabwe that I, that I met George um, after uh, uh, Chan AFCON uh, tournament um, some, some nine, ten years ago. So, uh, you know, a, a, a legend in his country and a, a just a wonderful, wonderful superhuman being um, who, who played, uh, you know, for us with such pride and um, also for Polokwane, obviously, for the years that he was there. Mm -hmm. So I think just the whole football uh, family is very, very sad. And, you know, for us at, at the club, um, uh, so much more so because uh, we, we've had two stints with George and he was a gentle giant of a guy that literally everybody in the club absolutely loved and adored. And, um, you know, his friends, his, his fellow Zimbabweans in, 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 in the squad, um, Bashir, our captain, and Jukamanjo, who just joined us, um, Ronald Fumbitai, who just joined us from Chipper, um, 
you know, uh, guys that are tremendously uh, close and, and friendly and, you know, very uh, connected um, with with George. So, you know, everybody in, in, in the club is just really, really uh, heartbroken. Yeah, 32 years old, way too young, Stan, um, for us to be having this conversation about someone. But I wonder, I mean, he, you guys did let him go at some point, and if, if memory, and you can correct me, he was clubless at the moment, although he was getting some assistance from you guys. Um, I can imagine things aren't great for him, family. Is he staying in South Africa? Is he getting taken back home? Are you helping um, and assisting it's, in any it's way? Li- it's, it's a little bit early. We did um, obviously sit with the family today, and when things settle a little bit, we'll hear from them, you know, what the intention is and mm-hmm. whether they want to repatriate um, George's body to, to Zimbabwe. Um, so, you know, as you say, uh, officially, you know, his contract actually had expired mm-hmm. um, in June um, and we didn't renew. And um, But obviously, you know, George is still very much part of our family. And he did have some health issues and, um, and he was attending to them. Uh, you know, in his personal capacity. Um, but, you know, we'll wait to hear from the family exactly what's going to happen so that we can, you know, pay our respects and play our part um, in, in, you know, in, in honouring George and, and and his memory, you know. So it's it's all raw, it's all, it's all fresh, and mm-hmm. um, it's all a big shock for, for everybody, as you say, a young person like this and we heard other news from overseas this week about another player so you know it really does highlight um the the kind of levels of stress and pressure that uh, on on professional players and um you know it's a it's a real uh it's a real wake-up call i think for 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 all, for all the players to to really make sure you know some i remember many years ago Tommy Madakhi playing for us um, and and it didn't really uh, be honest with the doctors about about a, a flu that he had because he wanted to play and he landed up being airlifted from the hospital with cardiac arrest and um, uh, taken to the hospital by by helicopter. Uh, one of the more stressful days I've ever had in football um, down in Cape Town. And um, you know that's that's what you can't take chances uh, with your health, uh, even young kids that. Uh, after COVID, um, you know, having a lot of uh, health issues when physically exerting themselves. So, you know, it's something that uh, I think the industry will take on board with more and more of these kind of cases coming on board. Uh, we have to we have to make sure that um, the screening of the players uh, takes place regularly. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's obviously... Uh, Something that, that, you know, when the dust settles, we have to unpack as an industry and, and, and make sure. I mean, um, it's it's very sad for, for, you know, to lose a 32-year-old person in any walk of life. Um, but um, a guy that, you know, that's six foot seven and, and, and physically towering over you and, you know, probably one of the strongest uh, and, and hardest trainers we had at the club over the years, you know, people forget that uh, George only played seven games for us, but yeah. um, his work ethic and his training ethic, uh, I, I don't think an, a Ron Williams would be the goalkeeper that he is today um, if he never had all those years working hard and being pushed to the max every single day, um, you know, by guys like George and Paulifa Pule, um, you know, model professionals um, who, who never, ever allowed their lack of game time to affect um, their, their disposition, their positive attitude, their mm. sense of humor, um, and what they brought to the team. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just it's very, very sad, um, a very, very sad day for us. It is indeed, and you're right. It is still rather right, but it is still rather new. Stan, we're going to be waiting on the Supersport, of course, uh, different platforms to hear what happens moving forward. Thank you so much for talking to us and to your entire family at Supersport United, the family of uh, George and, of course, the larger community of football. May his soul rest in peace and we're going to be with you in prayers. Thank you for talking and, to us. Amen to that. Thank you very much, Andile. P- appreciate, uh, you know, your support and um, your spread of um, the really wonderful person that, uh, you know, that George was, uh, that as football, we, we need to celebrate that that part and and keep that 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 uh, essence.
essence of him, his humility, his hard work, um, uh, his, his, his positive attitude and disposition, and um, just a, a fantastic human being. Uh, yeah, thank, th- thanks for at least allowing us to shine a small light on a sad day. CEO of Supersports United, Stan Matthews, joining us to wish um, the last respects, really, for the gentle giant, 32 years old, the Zimbabwean goalkeeper who played most of his career at Bulugwane but was brought to South Africa by Supersport United. As we say to him and his entire family, we're with you in prayers. May his soul rest in peace. Katleko Kilampela is with us. 20 after the hour, 6 on the Mighty Metro FM. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome. My guest today is a man that... Whenever we've had him on, analyzing football, just calling him about the games, be it Super Sports, Sundowns, Chiefs, some of the players, uh, teams he's played for, I've always thought to myself, geez, what a great footballing brain in analyzing football. Katako Kilampela sits with me. Katako. What's up? I'm not doing it. What's up? 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 Haven't seen you in a long time, man. Yeah, I'm kicking in alive now. I think the last time I was in the Rilly Tlapo. Yeah, in the Nah, never. <laughs> last, time, last time I saw you, Nikele Mole, like, um, MTN8 as an ambassador. No, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. What is it now? Four years retired? Yeah, going to five, almost five years. Almost five years. Yeah. Do you remember the last game? Mm, yes, I do remember. What was it? Was Eagles, no? Yes, it was well, Eagles. I think we were playing against Santos, Coquitao, mm. yeah. That was my last game. And w- where I broke my ankle. That's, so wha- that's why I retired. Because of the ankle? Yep. It couldn't come right? No, it couldn't come right. I mean, we tried uh, different options, but uh, it was impossible to fix it. Gee, was it What do you even like, when you get told that, this is the end, this is it, because I'm pretty sure that wasn't your retirement plan. You still had hopes and dreams. Yeah, I was fairly young then, 34 years. Yeah, you're 34. Still, yeah, I still felt like I could still go for another two or three seasons. Uh, but uh, the doctor suggested that uh, I stop food, I stop, I stop playing because uh, it was going to take me more than a year to recover, even if I did an operation. So it was not going to work. What's the first thing you think when they tell you that your means of earning money, your livelihood, the only thing that you've done in the last, what was it, by then, 15 years, your whole life, really, to be honest, is gone. Like, w- 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 now what? Did you have a plan B? Had you started other things already? Or did you have to turn your life around and start thinking about what now? Uh, it was difficult for me because, uh, you know, football is the only thing I knew then. Mm. And, uh, but obviously, when they told you that you can't play anymore, uh, you start thinking about other things. I thought about going to coaching. I thought about uh, going to business and... Uh, Mm, it took me a while actually to 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 come out of that uh, that cloud. Like uh, I couldn't believe it that um, I'm not playing anymore. So it took me almost two years to 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 start doing other things. You know, I tried doing chisanyama. I didn't work. Uh, I tried to. I remember go high. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tried to go into tendering. Also, you know how it works. And uh, here I am now. Uh, I'm employed with uh, VW. And we're going to get to that. We're going to speak to your employment with VW and how that came about and what it means exactly, you know? But two years, you're sitting in this dark place. You're wondering, what's going to become of me now? What am I going to do? What skills do I have to do? Yeah. Are you still financially... I mean, and this this goes for most people. It's not just for you. I wonder, you listening to the show right now, how about you don't have your job anymore? How long are your finances and your back uh, stashed money and your savings going to keep you going before you start saying, hey, uh, I need money coming in. Yeah. I think it doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account. As long as there's no income and it's only money coming out, uh, eventually you're going to go broke. So your money must make your money. Yeah. And two years is a long time. It is. You know, to sustain yourself with uh, with, with your savings. So it's, 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 it's a little difficult. And you were, you were, I mean, you were earning well, so you were living well. Yeah, I think uh, I was one of the players that was earning any well in this country. At some honest. point, I think you you, you were counted as the yeah. highest earner. In my peak, yes, uh, especially after the Confederations Cup, you know, that World Cup season. Yeah. Yeah, so after that, uh, it became a bit difficult when there was no income. 
What are we speaking about when we say earning one in South African terms? <laughs> I don't know. Is it over 200? I mean, I can imagine. You had sundowns. You were, you were part of that team that was doing well under Pizza Bafana Bafana. You were doing well. You were fresh from France. You were in the 200s at least. If you combine the whole package, you're talking about the same fees, your winning bonuses and other endorsements uh, with your salary. Yeah, you can get to that, to 200 back then, yes. And then you move to Chiefs again. Still good money. You move to Chiefs, but you know Chiefs, it's all about winning. You don't win, you don't, uh, you don't earn. Uh, then the, all the, the bonuses aren't bonus. there. Yes, yes. So you need to win trophies at Chiefs to, to make money. So I say Sundowns, it's, 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 it should be number one. When do you start realizing that, you know, uh, no, things are bad now? When when would you say was the lowest of the low for you to say, no, things are bad now? When you start running out of money, obviously. and uh, What is running out of money? I like, I also, it's like a meter. How's it like <laughs> <a laughs> no, meters too much. I think when uh, when my Chesanyama didn't st- w- wasn't doing that well. Because you uh, took yes, the money you had and you invested my, in it. Yes, because I took my own, um, money out of my own pocket, so... It became a bit difficult, and that's when I realized that. Uh, but had you ever run? A, have you ever? Had you ever up until that point? Have you ever run a business? Had you ever done anything besides play football? No, that, like Chisanyam is just a basic business. It's, it's a business that everyone does, and and you have people around you that that does those kind of businesses, and also bad advisors. You you get people that they don't have uh, the right intentions for you, and and you just throw money around, and you end up being. You end up running out of money. And, you know, you're a footballer. At some point, the most known footballer in this country, especially during the Pizzo tenure, because Pizzo would fight and and then go to any war for you, Katla. That man, at some point, (laughs) would go to war for you. So when things like Katla has moved back home, Katla was back in his old neighborhood, when people start speaking about that, it, it, it spreads like wildfire. <laughs> I'm not back home. I mean, what I'm saying is back in, in your, when people start seeing you back in your neighborhood uh-huh. a lot, which is where your business was functioning, of course. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, then then then, then there's those chats speak. But you've never been down and out. No, no, never. I've never, I've never went out and begged for, for things from from other people on the streets. And even now I'm living comfortably. So it's just that I'm not playing football anymore. Yeah, and I'm not earning the same money that I was earning, and I'm not obviously I'm not gonna live the same lifestyle I was living before, but I'm comfortable. I'm I'm, I'm just an ordinary guy now. Yeah, I'm just a, you're never gonna <laughs> be an ordinary guy, my friend. <laughs> Listen, you can ask Ikasi, uh, you can ask uh, Ika, you can ask Spain, you can ask the world. You'll never be uh, uh, just a guy. Do you have fond memories of football, though? Are you are you one of those people that's despondent with football that does one nothing to do with football? Or do you still look at it and say, I had a great career, life was great, it ended, it ended? Well, actually, I follow football a lot. I enjoy football. Football is my first love, obviously. I wouldn't be here if, if, it, if it was not uh, of football. So I follow football, I follow the PSL, I follow the, the EPL, I follow Bafana Bafana, and uh, I enjoy watching football. With, with, with the talent you had, when you hear the amount of money being paid now, I think it's normal. Fivo, football is evolving. The same as us. When our generation we came in, the, the previous generation was also in the same situation as us now. So it's not surprising. There's a lot of money flowing into football now. There's a lot of sponsors and and, and it, it, it should go there. It's changing. And I, I, I still think in the next te- 10 years, we'll be hearing about crazy amounts. But you say you thought about getting a job in football. Why not? With, 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 with the problems and the challenges that we have in the striking departments in, in across the DSTV Premiership uh, uh, for the national team as well, with your skill set, your international background as well, having played in France, why not get into football? Why not get into coaching? Why not get into some sort of work within football? Look, Angile, we, we, I'm sure it's not only me. I mean, most of the, the guys that they retired, I think they have the same problem. We knocked, uh, we knocked at the doors. We 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 
we try to engage with people about such and uh, we never get feedback we never come back to us and and also other things without football like you as an analyst and other stuff we don't know the criteria how it works but uh, so at the end of the day as a guy as a man you have to make a decision to put table uh, to put put in your table but you've got to help yourself for others to help you did exactly. you go get your coaching licenses your coaching badges did you think yeah. about that sort of stuff well that's true but honestly speaking when it comes to coaching uh, it's something that i thought about but i never never w- really wanted to do it because you don't think there's a coach in you i don't think so with with, with, <laughs> with, <laughs> with my personality and, and and i tried to do it with the youngsters mm. and i was impatient <laughs> i was very impatient and uh, but look it's not a closed door it's something that uh, i look into it into uh, in future if you're listening to this and you're thinking to yourself, you know, this conversation and its importance, there's one thing. Firstly, it's not just about soccer players. It's not just about uh, people in sport or in the media. It's about absolutely anyone. Yeah. You know, um, Katako didn't decide that I no longer want to play football. He was unfortunate. And that misfortune he had to deal with and make a way to life with it. This is not a story of uh, a, a, a somebody used to earn lots of money who's now a broke pauper and is telling their story. No. Is an inspirational story of somebody who said, it doesn't matter what happens in life, I will find a way to feed myself. I will find a way to take care of my family. Because you didn't go drinking your life and drinking <laughs> your money and squabbling your money. No, nah, no. Nah. You know, it just, after some time, it doesn't matter how much you have. If it doesn't come in, it's going to be an issue. Yep. Well, he went and found a job. We'll speak to Katako about how uh, it becomes that he is now employed. He's wearing a his job uh, proudly right now, how that job is going, uh, but more so, how has it felt being out in public with his new job? 86 0 that's the number to call us on WhatsApp on 60 7303 There I am, like I said, we've had Katlako on the show, um, we've used Katlako as an analyst, but never did I ever think, and I am sorry for it Katlako, because if you're saying, and I've said this to you even on air the last time, I said, Wow, I'm so impressed with your analysis. But that was it. Yeah. Even I didn't think to say, hey, um, you know, come and have an audition. Let me organize. Let me speak to someone. As you say, Nguti, here you are. You're giving the work. You're doing the work well. But even people like me who you have access to, I didn't think to say, hey, Katako, come on board. And I apologize for that. Mm-hmm. You know, when you now come out and I see this thing the other day and I think to myself, okay, I was happy for you. Katako employed. Have you been employed with uh, your new employer for long? Uh, Andy, let's get it clear, this clear first. Uh, I'm not for my. I'm not uh, officially employed. I'm still on a leadership program, and uh, of course, as you know, that this uh, motor industry is not as easy as people think. Uh, it's a bit difficult. Just like when I started playing soccer, I didn't go straight to, to the, the first team. The first team player. So they also want to see if I can reach the targets and stuff and. Uh, we will take it from there. And uh, I'd like to thank these two gentlemen that are here with me. I've got uh, Mr. Jonathan, who's uh, the, the, the manager, the manager, the manager, of, manager the, yeah. of the dealership and uh, the senior ex- uh, executive sales, sales person, uh, who's my mentor and my teacher, uh, Kanish. Uh, we sat down and then uh, we engaged and then uh, they saw an opportunity. Saw an opportunity. You approached them? Me and Ganesh were friends. So oh, okay. He, he, he proposed that to me. He's like, look, uh, the, motor industry, the motor industry has money, so you can come in and we try to do other things. And I took the opportunity. So at the moment, it's a learnership. So you're, yes. you're, you're learning yes. the so trade of yes. selling cars. So people mustn't get it twisted and, and think I'm already selling cars. So, so I'm still learning. You're still learning yeah. in order to get to a point where you're a salesperson. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and what what does that learnership look like? What, what? So far, so good. I started last week Thursday. Uh, positive response only. Then I got nine notes. I got four. Yeah, it's 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 a transition. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit weird, but uh, you have to do what you gotta do. Yeah, because oh, that's a three now. Two hours. Only. Two hours, yeah. and then you've got your day. Yes, yes. So there you are now. You're coming at nine. It's a learnership at the moment yeah. in order to secure this job. Yes. Yes, sir. and this is something you want, Katako. You you want to sell cars? Yes, because these two gentlemen are supporting me very well, and uh, they're encouraging me. And 
obviously I was trending this with this whole week so how did that feel did, 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 how did it when people were speaking about it? I mean there's two schools of thoughts the people that like myself are saying hey I'm glad you're doing something congratulations I'm glad you're going out there and trying to find a living and there are others that um, are saying uh, ah what happened that yeah, when, yeah. when you saw all of that how, how, where, where are you with that you know I'm used to this and um I was ready for it, you know, before even the post went out, I knew what was going to happen, you know. Mm. But, you know, I've played for Wafana Wafana before, and I think I was one of the most boot players in the country, you know. So I'm used to negative negative comments, and but that didn't bother me. But I think 80% of the, of the, the positive. comments were positive, so that's what, that, that encouraged me a lot, so I went on with it. And when people get there and they see Katla Kompela? They get excited, actually. I'm thinking... This week there was we we had maybe around fifty people coming to see me there. Where's the where's the dealership? It's in uh, it's in Midrand. In Midrand. Yeah, uh, uh, Lindsay Lindsay Seekers, uh dealership by Olif by New Roads. Oh, I see yeah, it yeah. actually. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, So there you go. Now now you're gonna get a lot of people popping in to take photos. They wanna mm. see at their home. But also but also Andy, when I did this thing, I thought about uh, certain things like uh, you know you you have seen how most players struggle after football and yeah. they don't want to come out of their comfort zone so I thought maybe I was hoping I'm hoping that it will encourage them to to do other things out of uh, football venture into something different besides football you know there is a stigma the, around, around that so you guys now exactly. trying to find 9 to 5 so I'm hoping that uh, it will encourage them and, and they'll go out of they'll come out of their com- uh, comfort zone and try to do other things without besides football hmm Kata Kampela is our guest. Uh, we're speaking to him about uh, his uh, his new life uh, and what he's doing. He still follows and loves football. And I, I can attest to this. Like I said, uh, we, we've had him uh, do analysis and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a very sharp man. Um, so not despondent with football per se. So what has to happen after, like what, what qualifies somebody who's on a learnership at a dealership to getting the job? Think. What did they say to you? What do you need to do for you to be able to qualify? We want to. There's millions listening right now. We want to make sure we help here. We want yeah, to get yeah, the yeah. job. It's a, it's a Let's get Katlako the job. It's a difficult industry, obviously. <laughs> so, I think it works with numbers. You mm. know, you know they, they want to see if, if you can be a sport as well. If when you bring business, or you will get hired. And but obviously, there's certain positions where you need qualifications. Mm. You know, but maybe if Mr. Jonathan was on the podium, we was going to explain it better. But what? Mm, how, how much? How far did you go with school? Kata, education wise. Grade twelve. Grade then, twelve. Then I left. I went to France. And then, so you got your grade twelve certificate, yeah. and then you left. Yeah. Did you ever further your education after that? No, I was. You're I was, too busy. You're too playing busy. football. I was playing football. Okay. Okay. And with this particular learnership, it doesn't need or require you to get any more sort of. Okay, Jonathan is there shaking. He's saying no. No. He doesn't need it. He can just go on. Uh, but perhaps, but Jonathan, please just come on because we, we want to know one thing. Uh, Jonathan is here. He's the manager um, of the dealership. What does Gatlejo need to do in order for him to get the job? Uh, Andy Lahai. Are uh, you well? I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> what does uh, my man have to do for him to get the job? Um, basically, on the leadership program, mm-hmm. what we do is that, um, like you mentioned before, the industry itself at the moment is a bit tough. Yeah. So we can't just uh, take somebody out there, put him on the spot, and then obviously he, he drowns. He drowns. Yeah. So basically what we do is that um, we allow people the opportunity to be salespeople, even from external. So what I mean by that is that you can basically be a salesman while you're not actually empo- employed. Because remember, where sales is concerned, even for us that are st- in within the business, we basically running our own business within a business. So when I got a call that Katla Kompela wanted to join us, I actually thought it was a joke. So when he actually came to the dealership, he noticed that I didn't notice him as well. So then he asked me, "Do you actually <laughs> do you actually notice me?" So I was like. <laughs> Uh, no, no. Ah, I, you know I, that you I, knew I, who I, Katla Ho is. Yeah, no, I wanted to. You knew I, the no, name. To be, honest, to be honest, he came at a very stressful day, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that industry sometimes sales, where sales is concerned, it's it's a bit up and down. So I think the timing of it, and the way that he just came up, I, I was a bit, 
uh, not so sure. But when I sat down, then I realized, okay, this is the guy. Then we sat down, me and the Matlawanolo, aka known as Ganesh, and then we said, no, I think let's let's give the guy the opportunity. And and to be honest with you, I think I am so surprised, or I'm overwhelmed actually by his commitment. What's, what's another eight? Definitely, he's Before there. It. He's there the whole day. Because the no, day, but he comes in on time. I'm telling you, he's there. <laughs> He's there on time, <laughs> and, and 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 like I said, <laughs> like he said, he's not formally employed as yet by us. So, at, at this specific moment, he can come in any time, learn what he needs to learn, and then go. But, but you haven't answered me. What does he need to do to get the to to, okay, to, so to qualify with as the a leadership salesperson? program? And then I heard you wanna help. Yeah. Or help the guy. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain number that he needs to generate. Remember, sales are all about generating. number of what of sales. Yes. Okay, hold so, on for me. Let me yeah. let me take a quick break because. Okay. I want to hear this. I need to know what this man needs to do. Okay. South Africa wants to know. Uh, I'm listening to that clip there with myself and the Sundowns uh, ladies coach, Jay Shabalala, and Katla was laughing at our French because his is much better. <laughs> his is much better than mine. How, how good is your French? Oh, so even like an accent. That's what the wrong. No, no, not bad. It's not bad. Yeah? Can understand. Ah, can, okay. Can hold the conversation. Yeah? Yeah. When else did you exercise your French? Yo. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Think a month back, maybe. Oh, okay, that's yeah, not too bad. Yeah. That's not good. Very quickly, Mr. Jonathan. Katakho, you know, um, South Africa is obviously now on board with him. You, you've gained by having, you know, a bit of traffic with him being, you know, the face has been posted everywhere. But what does he need to do in order to get that employment? Okay, so basically, he needs to give us six sales average per month. Six sales per month. Yeah, average per month. But so in a learnership, how do you do that? Do you because you, you can't sell in a learnership. Okay, so what he's doing is that he's working call hand in hand with one of my senior sales yeah. executive, the gentleman that's sitting next to me. So what he does because of I think a man of his magnitude at the moment we're receiving quite a lot of phone calls. Mm. But remember, some of those phone calls are not actually people that want to buy. They don't generate sales. Yeah, yeah. they people that just want to actually it's know just leads. And yeah. the guy is actually there. Yeah, because everybody at the moment is still a bit puzzled about the whole thing the whole transition so for me it's been a motivational story and i'm glad i'm i'm, I'm actually becoming part of it because i i honestly see the potential in him and like i said he's very dedicated so at the moment what he does is that he gets the people that wants to buy from him and there are people that actually call the dealership and specifically want to speak to him and then what he does is that he he sits with matlo and then they work on the lead so there's there's a lot that goes on to, okay. to the actual sale. And I think he's getting to learn that. That's why I'm saying that he's still outside. He's not really working for us as yet. But I can tell you, he will definitely is on the right track when it comes to All right, so there you go. If you are going to be there, just uh, make sure that you ask for Katlako in particular. <laughs> Kat, and, yeah. and just for financial education's point of view, and you, you, you're a man that now realizing you're one of those people that's never going to starve because you're not scared to throw yourself into anything. Yeah, yeah. Is there financial education in football? Is there a point where yeah. somebody said to you when you're at Supersport Chiefs, Sundowns, hey, you're earning this much money, invest here, 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 then your investments yeah, yeah. are going to work for you for the rest of your life sort of thing? I think you do get uh, advices from those people from Sunlam and other... They come, they come and <coughs> to the they club. They come, but they, they don't indicate you into... Until a certain level of where you have to understand when, what to do and what, to, what not to do with money, so I think sometimes it's uh, I don't know I don't know now if, if if clubs do it or not, but it's something that they need to look at and uh, you know. So for you in particular, that never happened. No one ever no, sat no, with you and said, "Hey, no, if you put this much every month, um, there's a retirement package that comes out of it. There's money that can work for you if you invest offshore, if you invest here and here. nothing like that." Look, people come. All, the people come and they tell you this: is the, the 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 product. This, uh, if you put so much money into this, uh, it's gonna generate this in a few years. And but they don't really tell you the the pros and cons of these things. So, as I said, I don't know if they do it now, mm. but uh, they, they it's something that the PSL teams or, or or teams need to look at and and, and try to educate the players. But uh, I'm actually impressed with these generations. I think a lot of them are investing into business. They get into business, and hopefully, it's, it's 
doing the right work and it's not gonna come back and and they, they start crying and say the money's gone who do you regard you know because players have or are certain club legends do you regard sundowns as the team that would possibly if if not with the legends would 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 you go to sundowns would that be the team super sport chiefs you're a legend of which team or do you not wear a particular creed i'll say sundowns because it's the club where i spent most of my years there and uh the club where i started get, getting recognition and mm. uh the club that i think i think i've done uh, very well at and uh yeah i'll say sundowns i'll say sundowns because of the years i've spent there what's your relationship like now with beats or if you have one at all I think we're okay. We don't talk much, but I think we're okay because the other time he invited us into his into his house, and uh, I was I was one of the players that was there. So I think we we're okay. Peter has been watching this whole thing as it's been unpacking on on social media. Yeah. And when we said we're having you here, he asked to say something to you. So okay. please have a listen to this. But um, let me take a quick break. Coming out of that, Peter has a message for you. 1851 on the Mighty Metro FM, Kathako Kilampela is with us. We're just chopping it up over uh, just one single thing. Not uh, not, not, not the, the conversation I'd like to have as far as football is concerned with him. But uh, in having this conversation, a friend of the room, Pito Musimani, said, hey, let me say something to him. Kathako, this message is directed just for you. Please have a listen. Hi, Timmy. Uh, this is a message from my boy, Kathako Kila Mpela, Babola e Kila. Um, um, yeah, Kila, number one, number nine. I think he's ranked with the uh, top striker in the country, legend. The level of Benny, Sean Bartlett, those kind of strikers who used to score goals, Jerry Scosana. Um, what a complete striker who understands the movements and understands tactics. He's got speed. He's got high technique. Knows where to be at the right time. Strikes the ball with power, with accuracy. He's complete, complete number nine. Um, he's got a lot of goals for me at Super Sport United. My Melody Sundowns, national team. What a player. I think he's the only player in the world who has striked 40 meter drives to Casillas, the Real Madrid goalkeeper, who's playing for Spain. Two 40 meter drives, serious power in his legs. Um, I'm happy that he's got a career um, beyond football. Uh, I hear that he's with uh, um, um, he's into sales now with the motor industry. Brilliant, brilliant idea. Can move forward. He's got a name, um, and also he still loves football. I know, and he can do part-time coaching to follow his uh, his passion. Uh, hopefully, he will. He will, he will help us at the uh, Pizzo Musimane soccer schools during his part time. And um, he must go for a soccer batches qualification, coaching qualification. He's clever, he knows what to do. And uh, he will come up like uh, all these coaches who are coaching the Morgan Gold, the Dylan Shepherds. Uh, yes, all these coaches who are who are part of football, he will be part of football, but let him follow what he's doing right now so that he can support his family and himself. And with time, slowly, he must join the soccer, the coaching qualifications. And if he has trouble with that, I'm there to support him. He knows he just can just give me a call. And uh, we speak to Walter Steenbock. Uh, then he gets qualified like all these uh, coaches. Why not? Then he can have uh, his career both both on the on, on the business side and uh, also on the football side. 
Yes, why not? Very good step that he has taken. He's moved in the right direction. And that's what we want out of our ex-players. All the best. All the best killer. Mabula and Fanagit. That's got you a little emotional, yeah? Yeah. Because I never expected this, especially from from Coach Pizzo, because I, I, I think I know he's busy. And um, obviously the things he said about me and our relationship, and we... We come a long way. We come a long way. I think he's the. He launched me. I think he launched me, and because people didn't know about me uh, when I was still in France, and I think, and it's funny how I met him because I was called up for the under twenty, not for the Kosafa camp. It was my first call up, and he came to the hotel, and he knew everything about me, and I was surprised and. <coughs> and then that's when he said uh, if ever you think about coming back and play professional football uh, just give me a call and when things didn't go my way or oh, the way it was planned in France I gave him a call and the same night I was on a flight to join him at Super Sports and I think he's someone that I owe, I, I owe my life into because you, you also know that uh, when things were not going well for me in the national team he was always there for me and and he kept his words and, and, and we got what we got and he was always very supportive of me and he was like a father he's a father, father figure to me actually because we we also spoke about life and a lot of things and and to be honest he tried to advise me about life and and, and maybe if I listened to him more I could have been more than what I am now. He said call him again. So in the same way that that call you made it before. Make it again. He's proud of you. He stopped everything he was doing and he said, please play this for him. Killer, I wish you the very best, my brother. Thank you, Andila. And I'm going to keep my end and get you an audition. I'm going to keep my end. I appreciate you. I appreciate the memories that I can now sit and share with my kids. I appreciate how you made me feel at sundowns more so than anywhere else because I think that's when you shone brightest. Yeah. You know? I appreciate you most and I can't wait to see what life has for you because you're not the type to cow away and go to a village somewhere <laughs> and sit and wait to die. No. You're fighting this thing, you're looking at life and you're taking it by its horns. Thank you for passing through and you're making me emotional, so <laughs> I gotta go before I start crying <laughs> on the air. I appreciate you and all the best, yeah? Thank you, Andy. If there's ever anything you know you can support from us. Thank you very much. Thank you I for the opportunity. You, my brother. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. He's out of here. Katako Kilampela, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, an amazing story. You know, I, I've been speaking this week and most of you have been having me for saying, you show support. You don't just say, hey, yeah, I love something. You show up. So let me see it. Show up for Katako. Show up. Intentionally so. He's told you his details. Show up. Hmm? Show up for him. It's almost over the hour, seven o'clock, and I think uh, uh, it's just wrapped up in the cricket as well. India at home are gonna be in the final 
of the World Cup. They're either going to be facing South Africa or Australia. That outcome we'll know tomorrow. Thank you so much to Katlejo Kilampela. You heard what Peter said. Babulai Kila. Kila. Olepar. It's two after the hour seven. I've uh, got to move over now. Sport at 10 this evening. The champs are in the building. Sundowns bringing the AFL trophy. We celebrate them on Sport at 10. Uh, a couple of players are going to come through as well. So I'm looking forward to it. I know Grant is coming. I know Lebo is coming as well. So let's have some fun this evening. Pella, pella. That's all me.